Um, my name's Delaney. Um, I'm an artist based in South Carolina. Um, I started making books, I want to say in 2022, when I was first introduced to it in grad school during a class, and I really fell in love with it. Um, a lot of my artwork is paper-based, so when I started making um, different type of books, I was really interested in the way that I could use paper to play around with um, changing the narrative and the different dynamic aspects of the books. Yeah, so <laughs> this book is called Wonders Down Under. I was thinking a lot about uh, the way that, well, so I was a swimmer when I was uh, in undergrad and when I was little and I've always loved the water and at this time when I was making this book I was living near uh, Lake Erie and I was thinking about water I was also thinking about the ways that a lot of times when you go to the beach uh, you oftentimes find plastic and different um, garbage particles just roaming about and I was thinking about how I could talk a little bit about how I wanted to bring awareness to the oceans and um, thinking about coral specifically. So I, I wanted to make this book based off of um, the topic of uh, coral spawning, which is when coral reproduces and um, having the little different pop-up areas um, was really important to me because I wanted it to be a surprise as you open the accordion. There's different little elements that peek out and it's almost like a uh, pop out um, surprise, I guess. But I used uh, Taikozo to make the little circles and I stuck those on and then um, I had a lot of fun with the paper cutting. And then this, do you have the next picture? Yeah, just a oh. sec. I found them and then I had trouble pulling them up. So let me try it again. <laughs> okay. Um, Sorry, someone just walked in too. So I will get, how about I just grab your book? And, okay, um, I also to, have the yeah. pictures. If oh, you, you do, could would, you just do would it? Would that I'm be sorry. okay? Yeah, yeah, you, you have permission to screen share. So just do that. That would be amazing okay. since. Let me, let me pull that up then. I'm sure that um, all of us artists understand the many files of photos <laughs> on our computer. <laughs> I don't know, I have so many. So just give me a second and I can pull it up. Okay. So whenever you're ready to um, close your screen share, I can, oh, okay, perfect. Okay, so uh, here's the open photo of this book. Um, as you can see, you can, uh, as you open the book up a little bit more, there's different aspects. And I really enjoyed playing around with the different textures. I'm a big texture person. Um, I also really enjoyed when I was photographing this, the lights and the way that the shadow um, reflected off of the material that I was photographing the book on. I also added a little pop-up. Um, pull out area where it has the title of the book on the side and then the book uh the book binders or the book board when you open it up it was kind of a um box inspired opening so it when it closes together uh there's a magnet that holds it all in place but this is the back side um it's hard to tell but there's a bunch of glitter and shimmering aspects. Um, I know when I was swimming, um, a lot of times at the beach, I always thought of the water was sparkling. So I wanted to incorporate that in there. And then here's another photo of it slowly closing. It's always hard to photograph that. And it's closing oh. up. And that's the final book. And there it is sitting down. Ooh. Does anyone have any questions? Lady, this is uh, Claire speaking. Um, I'm working on a project. First of all, your book is really lovely. Um, Thank you. There's a project um, I'm doing with the Nurture Nature Center in Eastern Pennsylvania. And we're 
considering um, the effect of plastics and microplastics on our environment, specifically with water. So oh, wow. If, if, if that's a subject that interests you, you can check out the um, Nurture Nature Center in Easton. Okay, thank you. And see if there are resources there that, that are interesting to you. I'll definitely check that out. That's awesome. Thank you so much. I, I have a comment. I really love the magnet idea. I mean, I would never have thought of that. And now I love that idea very much. Thank the you. other thing is I, uh, the, the texture you say, but also the way that you're using the color and the very fine lines with the paper, I think is fascinating. Puts me Thank in you. mind of an artist, Joan Hall, that I actually studied with at WashU years and years and years ago. But she does her own, she makes paper and has done these very large wall installations that are very reminiscent of this, dealing with the sea. And uh, I think so that some of her stuff is also dealt with trash in the sea. Um, I have a little bit of an issue with her work that she uses plastic to line her paper for <laughs> these installations. But, you know, they, if you look up Joan Hall, you might have an affinity for the kind of stuff that she does. But okay, she makes yeah. the paper, too. So. That is that's something all. that I I would love to get into, but I know that's a whole whole other area of art making, the paper making. It's not as difficult as it sounds. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'll try it out this summer. But thank you so much. I'll definitely check her out. Uh, I have a, a comment now, um, Delaney. This is lovely. Have you heard of the um, technique called Junshi? I have not. What is that? Junji is, um, I believe it's Korean. Um, it's a manipulation of solid paper into these openings. And it has sort of this lacy open weave kind of notion like the the, the orange, um, small areas and the orange areas here. Um, it kind of resonates with me on the same level as, as your work. So you might want to look at that. It's J-O-O-M-C-H-I, I believe, Junji. I yeah, I'll definitely take a look at that. I'm actually, um, I'm getting ready for a show right now in South Carolina um, using paper to talk about my biracial identity as half Korean. So that's oh, actually oh, wow. right on par. Okay. Yes, and um, a lot of this was actually based off of a lot of um, paper cutting that I saw based in Korean artwork. So um, thank you so much for saying that. I'll definitely check that out. This technique uses wetting the paper and then pushing and manipulating it to create yeah. openings. It's not really cutting. Um, it's more like uh, hand manipulation while it's wet. Ooh. Yeah. But uh, yeah, fascinating. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions? Just one question, Delaney, about um, your paper cutting. What kind of knife do you use? For this, I used a regular X-Acto blade. I think it was, I want to say it's the 11, number 11. Does that sound right? I don't. That sounds right. Okay. Um, I wasn't paying too much attention to this. <laughs> and then I also was using, um, I found at my local art supply store, there's a special Japanese scissor where it's coated in Florentine, I believe, where when you cut with it, the stickiness of different materials, it doesn't um, crust the uh, blade of the scissors. So that was what I was using to help uh, cut the bigger shapes, like the orange areas. But for all the delicate ones, it was the regular exacto knife blade. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Um, everyone, this is one of the ones that people had the most questions about how it was made when they've come and seen it in person uh, oh. with all the cutting. So, you know, I, I looked um, on your Instagram page to get more information than what you sent me so I could answer the question because I was like, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but this answer is awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. Thank, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Um, I, Kathy Speck, are you ready to go next? I am, um, and I can screen share. Yeah, perfect. That'd be great. Thank you. Do that. Uh, hmm. 
You should have permission. I, I pulled up the picture that's on the uh, Book Arts website. Uh, I'm not sure where it is. So sometimes when you screen share, if you have the file open already, it should just show that instead of your. Hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, just go up and click on Illustrated Accordion up in your screen share, because right now it just says you're on the Zoom page. Do you see that up in the um, top bar above the oh, Google? Okay. And what what what's your instruction? Tell me what. So you're, you're changing to the tab that has the words Illustrated Accordion on it. Oh. So all the way at the top of your screen. And yeah. It has our logo next to it. Oh. Let me stop the share and start okay. over. I can go grab your book. Hmm. Can you remind me of the name of your book so I can... Oh, rice paper sampler. Actually, Wait. I might have just figured out what I was doing. Okay, it's right behind me though. Let me let me screen share again. There we go. Okay, I'm so I I apologize. I hate oh, this no around on Zoom. So um, I often like to use my books to showcase or to collect small paper collections of things, and I was sorting through my. Uh, papers, all my stash of papers looking for something and realized that I had quite a few very lacy um, uh, rice papers. And at a thrift store, I found a box of um, little mailable frames that were intended to be used for four by six photos. And so I strung together those frames um, into the accordion and slipped a little piece of the um, uh, rice papers, the lacy rice papers into the frames, just to showcase all the beautiful textures that rice paper comes in. And uh, to make them more interesting, I slipped uh, different kinds of colored papers and iridescent papers behind um, the, the various rice papers. So it's just a, a little showcase for a, a collection of lacy rice papers. This one has a ginkgo leaf behind it. Uh, you can't quite see the shimmer, but this this one has uh, some iridescent blue paper behind it. So that's it. Yeah. I also have your book. I just went and got it so I could hold it oh. up too and you're done screen okay. sharing. So maybe you can see some of the iridescence. Let's see. So let me spotlight myself for a sec. Or maybe you guys can see me already. Here's the book. You can see there's a little tabs in the back so you can pull the pages out and some of the shininess on there. And thank you. Thank you, Katie. All right. Any questions? Well, I've. Uh... I love the idea of the little reliquary for the papers. Yeah. But it's a great, the idea of the book as collection, like, you know, they used to take old manuscripts and put, just jam a bunch of different kinds of manuscripts together to make a book just to store it that didn't necessarily have anything to do with each other. But I really like the idea of taking this as a collection into a book so that it's kept and protected. Thank you. It's an idea I've, I've used many times and, uh, um, for people who love paper, like we all do, we do accumulate postcards, photographs, stamps, paper, et cetera, et cetera. So um, the making a book out of some of these precious things is is really satisfying. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Denise Stevenson, you can, I don't know if I got your last name right, but you can go next. I know you need to leave. You, you did. Thank you. Uh -huh. um, so currently I'm participating in the 100 day challenge. Um, 
and having a great time with that. Although I had to slow down, I originally wanted to do a book every day and I, a new book, right? So I did that for seven days and then I was exhausted and said, okay, I'm gonna slow down a little bit. Um, so I'm trying to do a book every other day. It's, it's sometimes working out. I thought I would just show a couple of those, um, a couple that have been fun. And one of them actually inspired by Christina Hajosi, who's here. So undulating frequencies, developed out of the idea of how how do you use um, your marbling paper that you've made in in book arts and so um, this is an accordion I thought I would show that since we're doing accordions so I chose this a piece that I liked and then I stitched on it and some of the stitching you can barely see because it's it's roughly the same colors down here you can see on the back what that's actually shaped like, maybe. Um, and as I worked on it, I just realized that I, you know, wanted to follow these curves and not follow them and um, appreciate their undulation. And so that led to the title. And as a writer, anytime I come up with the title, I'm pretty happy. Um, and am pleased I'm trying to explore new techniques and, and gain in my ability to make my books a little more artsy because the language is more what I'm good at. Um, and so I also, you know, even close this one, which is something I don't do very often. So that made me happy. And then um, just one more. I uh, also try to do Are You Book Enough challenges. And so this last month was Mosaics. And so I created this, piecing it together and put in oh, quotes lovely. from mosaics, but also then did these with different techniques. So this page is um, made with scraps from stamp making. So things that have been carved off of those stamps and the green one, which doesn't want to open now, <laughs> and the green one has both colored pencil as well as a few pieces of paper so it's mixed and the red one is in red and gold is entirely pieces of paper so that was just a fun a couple of fun things that i've um made in the process of trying to do 100 books so hi denise it's christina hi christina it's great to, to hear your enthusiasm of trying to tackle some of these um, projects and groups and collaborations and just kind of spreading connections and your experience. Um, you're in our Xene Exchange too. Um, you, you are a busy lady right now. Um, so I just wanna say I appreciate watching your enthusiasm and how uh, even if you don't feel like you can do one a day, you're still activated by it. And that's kind of part of the community and how we are. With each other which i love anyway good to see you thank you good to see you too awesome does anyone else have any questions okay so thank you so much for sharing um laurel are you ready to go i have your book okay yes, yes. so i i oh, can i'm sorry wait oh. sorry oh different which oh laurel? i didn't know there's two um Laurel Moorhead, you, Roman asked me okay. to show your book, me show your book, right? Or no? Um, I have a screen share ready to go. Okay. If you have the book, my book reflections. Wait. So were you just now speaking to the other Laurel or are you speaking to me, Lori Moorhead? Lori Moorhead. Okay. I, but I may, I think I grabbed, is your book on um, paper that you made or? Yeah. Handmade paper. Yes. blue blue and white i have your book here so okay. would you like me to show it or do you want a screen share or both? i think i think the screen share might be sufficient perfect sounds good all right um okay uh so you can see that correct yes okay so um my book is a simple accordion uh, I used handmade paper uh, that I made on a, a study trip to Fabriano, Italy in 2019. And the entire book and box are made from that paper. Uh, you can kind of see the ridges uh, in the paper from the, um, you know, from the 
uh, mold. Mm -hmm. um, and the blue is also that paper, but I sprayed it with spray inks that um, like Delaney's piece and others are, ir are iridescent. So they are shimmery, but of course they don't show up in the photo. So there's a simple accordion. I cut the white paper, the top layer, and then I simply attached the blue behind it. Um, so it's it's really just one cut. And I, I've i taken um, workshops uh, through um, Moroccan gentlemen um, on actually drawing the Mor Moroccan geometric designs with a compass and a straight edge. So I used those patterns that I had drawn under his instruction. I, I make templates and I, I reduce them down and make them bigger. So, you know, I don't have, to, I don't actually do all of these as original drawings, but I use my templates. Um, so it's just another angle. Um, here you can see the watermark from the paper um, because yeah, and I forgot I had done this. I actually then I put the blue. No, no, this is still it, th when I sprayed the the paper with the blue spray inks, it was still white on the back. So it confused me for a second. And I thought, did I put another layer? But I didn't. Um, so that um, I made this box and that's just another angle, the front and back covers have their own, which I just, I actually cut those out of the blue spray paper and put those directly on the white. Um, and, you know, so even <laughs> you can see that the blue did get through to the other sides. Um, and so there's that. Um, okay. So then the box has, well, the book sits in it. It has a little tab to pull up on again from the blue sprayed paper to lift it out of the box. And then this is my colophon that talks about um, making it in Italy, spraying it, hand cutting it, and then the stitching. And I'm gonna show you the stitching on the top of the box. And then I actually made this box following instructions from Denise Stevenson, who just spoke. Uh, she she had given us given uh, our group here in San Diego instructions on how to uh, make a little origami box that actually fits your book that's you know sized specifically. So I used the instructions and you know made the bottom one and then made the top one just slightly bigger uh, so that it would easily come on and off and cut the little half circle holes so that it's you know you can hold the bottom one in that gap area and, and lift it off easily because this the whole thing is fairly delicate. Um, so then I used, I uh, punched in another one of the designs onto another piece of the paper. And then I stitched it using variegated uh, blue threads. And so I was really happy because I was able to keep the color you know, pretty consistent, even when I like did the, the colophon. And if you see, I, I got the colophon to, for the title of reflections, I got that to have this sort of um, variegated uh, font uh, and used the same thing. So I was happy about being able to keep the color pretty consistent. So that is the stitched box I stitched it on this piece of paper and then attached it to the box. Um, I thought overall that would be the simplest way to do it. And this is where I've punched the holes to do the stitching and I've started stitching, but I haven't completed it yet. And that's just another version of it, I think. Yeah, that's just more Moroccan geometric. Okay, so... Um, any questions before I stop my screen share? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing. I love your book. I love the blue so much. It's so thank beautiful. You.
And and I just have to say that you you guys did use it. I, I don't know if you're the one in charge, but it was in one of your promo pieces for this exhibit. And I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I pick those out sometimes. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, <laughs> and, oh, one last thing is that um, my book from last year, uh, and it's going to be hard because I've got a background, but this one is the the photo for actually for signing up for this year's yep. and it's on its way to this is reduction prints and it's on its way to uh alicia bailey's printed matter exhibit in colorado i'm going to be sending that out so that's that's what i got congratulations it's awesome thank you thank you all right um Ad adrian um or Adriane, I don't know. Are you, are you ready to go? Yeah, Adrian. Yes, good. There. Hello. Gonna... Hello. I have your oh, book. Sorry. Oh, you've got my Is book. I have here. Screen. Would yeah, you I have a screen, screen share? Oh, oh, you want a screen share? That's that's better. Yes, go no, ahead. No, no, no. I want the book and a screen share. That's okay. Okay. Let me show you the, I'll first um, just spotlight myself and show you the book physically. And you can talk while I'm showing and then I can screen share. Okay. Okay. Well, hi, folks. I'm zooming in from Venice. <laughs> the first thing I'm going to do is give you a commercial. I, I know that your organization takes groups to Venice every year. And if you haven't signed up, you must do it. <laughs> because I work in the studio that, that you guys use. And it's an absolutely spectacular place. So, so my work of the last years has obviously been influenced greatly by my being here in Venice. And uh, so there's tons and tons of gold, <laughs> lots and lots of things about the island. And I'm a printmaker. I've been a printmaker for, for probably more years than many of you have been born. <laughs> so, so, so what I do is I generally make these large prints and then I cut them apart and I turn them into books. So this one, Veneziana Fantasia, is um, it, it talks about my my love of all of the things in Venice. Uh, hold, hold that one open for a okay. second with the, the blue side. So that that side, I took a print, I cut it up, and I, I collaged the pieces. Those are rather loose interpretations of the islands that make up the main part of what we think of as Venice, and and then floating in the floating in the water are different water um, uh, letterpress statements about some poetry having to do with it uh it's it's mixed media i like to print and then and then put paper in it and sew on the paper uh there's a lot you can see the bottom part is um a highly gold <coughs> uh, trim gold trim there's lace on the tops the other on the other side and the other side also is wearing a veil, is wearing a veil of gold. So you, you can see the lace in the veil of gold. So this is a nod to just, just things that we think of as Venetian, the Carnavale and the water and the islands and the, the drama and the Byzantine influence. So, so there you have it. <laughs> so <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> Thank you. And thanks for the plug for the book arts in Venice. We have very few spots left. So if you're interested, you should check out our website about it. I went last year and yeah, the space is amazing to work in. Were, were you there when we were there? No, I never come in the summertime. Okay. It's too, too hot, too many zanzare, very... too many mosquitoes. Do you live in Venice? Do you live in Venice or are you just there for No, 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 not, not permanently. I've, I've been coming and working in Italy for about 40 years now. First, I was based in Florence. I taught at a school in Florence printmaking and paper making and uh times change school changed i've changed so i moved north and i've been coming out of venice because i've known it very well because we used to take it to take my students up here all the time for the biennale this year by the way is a biennale year a biennale dell'arte yeah they have a biennale every year for something but this is the biennale dell'arte and not to be missed because the entire the entire area becomes a, a, a giant art gallery so you'll, you'll have the opportunity to see art from all over the world. Some is very good, some is garbage. <laughs> but you know, but that's but that's how contemporary art works. 
and it's it's worth the experience and it's worth the mosquito bites <laughs> so, so sign up bring your your offer your whatever you use to keep yourself out of mosquitoes <laughs> There's quite a few Italian connections. You're there now. Katie and I have both been on the Book Arts in Venice trip through the Book Arts Center. And then mm -hmm. the Fabriano trip is every year, too, I think, whoever said they had been on that. I mean, if you right. can swing it, it is, it's an it's, so worth, it's worth, it's worth, it's worth it schlepping over here. Totally. Oh, for sure. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or I have some, I wait, have some, how do we do screen share? Yeah, go ahead no. and do screen share. Can you start broadcast? It didn't work. What, oh. Is it coming up? I don't know what's happening. Uh, no, <laughs> uh, it did not work. So I'm going to okay. just, I'll turn that off. Never. Later. Okay, just turn it off. It's no problem. But I, I, I wanted to show you the prints. Stop the broadcast. I wanted to show screen broadcast has stopped. Okay. Oh, I stopped it for you. So so I do okay. Okay. I don't yeah. know what I'm doing. How do I get back to the screen? Oh, there we go. There we go. I think I'm back. There and back. Well, you see, I don't know anything about zooming. <laughs> <laughs> it changes every time. Anyhow. So. Good. And whoever that gentleman was that was talking about Washington University. I've known Joan Hall for many, many years. <laughs> She's quite a fabulous artist. So look her work up, folks. She, she's done some uh, very cutting edge uh, paper making things. So next on our list is Laurel. I'm sorry for the confusion before, but are, are you ready? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm ready. So let's see. I have a picture on my desktop. So do I just... Yep, go to screen share, and if it's open already, it should just pop up. Go to screen share. Screen share. There it is. Can you see that? Yep, it just came up. Okay. So um, I took a cy cyanotype class, and I made I made a I had a big piece of paper, and I laid tea bags down on the cyanotype type solution. And I did different things to the different tea bags. I use Windex or apple cider vinegar or turmeric or paprika or a little green tea later or bleaching. So and laid it out in the sun, rinsed it, and then I cut it all up so that, that you could see all the individual tea bags and put them on. This is like an addition of I've did four or five of these some are more blue. This one ended up being a little light blue. And I, I put it on this long accordion, which is, um, you can see it's put together in the middle. And then I added a couple of real tape key bags sewn on in two spots and a couple hang tags. Um, but um, I like working with tea bags. <laughs> uh, I think that's about it. Oh, the other thing. In the one to the third one, you can see the dots. That's from kosher salt, which makes a really nice um, um, pattern when you're cyanotyping. So this is the wet cyanotype technique? Yes. Excellent. Yeah. And um, everything. Oh, I put and I put these onto the, the black paper, which is a very thick. I think it was BFK Reeves, but, but I. I placed them all on with double stick tape rather than glue because I was afraid it would I'd get some wrinkling. But um, it seems to have held very well. And then I have a, I think on the front of that, I might have a tea bag uh, holder. I can't remember which one that has. But that's it. Yeah, it's beautiful. We've had a lot of um, Santa types in this exhibit. And when people ask me which ones are sanotypes, I have forgotten to show yours uh, because the colors are a little bit, you know, they're not as dark blue as some of them. Um, right. So, and with the tea bags added on, um, it it um, made me forget to to include yours, but if more people ask, I'll definitely show it. Okay. Well, I, I have another one that I did, which is more dark blue. I think maybe I had did 
more experimenting with dipping into soda ash and so that and and teas and that lightened things up a little bit and gave it a different look. Yeah, it's really pretty. But, your your okay. piece last year was cyanotypes with plants. Is that was that correct, Laurel? Uh yeah, and that was a darker blue. Yeah, yeah that was with, lovely. With, I remember that one. Yeah. With herbs. Yeah. Um, but it's fun. I lo I love the blue and white. <laughs> Me too. So pretty. Yeah. Are there any questions? No. Okay. Should okay. I stop the share? I, yeah. Either, I, I can do it. Yeah. All right. Okay. Oh, yeah. Someone asked do if there's a scrap of barcode in it. In mine? Yeah, I think in yours. It, um from the tea maybe from the maybe. tea egg maybe yeah i don't i don't not intentionally <laughs> <laughs> i don't um i don't know i don't think so it must just be how it looks in the photo or something yeah um thank you so much for sharing yep um christine are you ready to share yes i am great um, are you going to screen share? Or is, I'm you... going to screen share. Yes. Perfect. Excellent. Thank you. So this year's piece um, is a continuation um, of what I call grief books. Um, last year's piece was too. It was called Struggles of Wills. Um, so these are reflections i guess you could call them um, sort of like memoir based ideas that i'm doing conceptualizations i've had a lot of um, i'm 56 and in the last four years nine other family members passed none of which were covid just of old age most of them were 80 to 90 year olds um, and it's um looking at some of the relationships and some of the life lessons that in many cases weren't so good out of some of these <laughs> relatives. So it's not always um, a positive interaction that you're, you know, remembering. Um, I think it's all the sides of grief. So there's beauty and sadness in the work. Um, this particular book, Bumpy Road, is more about them all kind of rolled up. It's not necessarily about a specific person, like Struggles of Wills was about my father. Um, so you're seeing the box housing and the colophon as a separate piece. Um, and then the cover, I'm a marbler and I do like uh, to conceptualize the marbling and I do like to do marbling of vats that are dead practically, uh, meaning contaminated and not doing so good. I teach a lot and I get a lot of leftovers from classes that are a little contaminated. And I enjoy pushing the fringes of marbling to new places by doing the don'ts, you know, going against uh, the rules, so to speak. Um, so you're looking at some marbling that's a little less traditional. And uh, I do like to react to the marbling imagery itself. Um, and kind of see, let it push you in the direction of your, it's like a Rorschach, you know, you're, you kind of react to this abstract imagery and then evolve it somehow with stitches and word associations and sometimes collage. And sometimes the structure of the book itself can lead to those kinds of revelations. Um, so I start with the marbled paper itself and then react to it basically is how I do. Um, I chose to keep a lot of cardstock uh, sheets of the same paper I marbled onto so that I could do uh, substrates and like a wraparound closure for the piece as well. Um, the actual accordion book itself though, um, you know, this has, you know, it's got a wrap and it's got a box and it's got a separate call on. This is actually the accordion base itself. Um, it's two-sided with um, collage materials and hand stitching. They're very organic. They're very um, scientific feeling. A lot of a lot of my family were doctors. Um, I had a struggle against the mindset of that. Um, as like I was never attended to as a kid. Um, I was always put in extracurricular activities. I did every art related, dance related, music related. 
um, you know, anything to keep the kids busy so that my parents didn't have to worry about it. And yes, that's a really wonderful thing to do to your kid, but it turns your kid into an artist, right? Um, which they got upset about once they realized when we were in high school and college that we weren't going to go to med school, all four of us. Um, they, they railed against it, um, even though it was kind of their fault that we became artists. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, but it's like a struggle and marbling is a struggle. Um, it's a street fight on the surface of the vat. It's pushing and shoving and a lot of people just see it as meditative, but I kind of see it as a conceptualized thing. And uh, so I feel like this for me is about body and disease and paths and choices and um, bumpy road. It could be um, one of my family members going through a cancer. It could be um, just a simple argument or it could have been the mile long driveway to my dad's house that was never paved and was a bumpy road, literally. Um, so I feel like it's narrative, even though it's abstract and there's no words. Um, so I think it can open up to interpretation to other people. And so I kind of like the idea of just putting a title on a piece and letting people see where it goes for them. Yeah. So here you're just seeing a few other angles of it. The most recent one that I just delivered and I'm super excited about is also a grief book. Um, these are not big pictures, so hopefully you can see them. I think these are the web versions of these. Delicates is um, a, a grief book about my Aunt Janet, who was my husband's aunt, but was more like his mother. So she had a very big part of our life. Um, I emptied her house and, you know, really did a lot of her laundry and her life chores at the end for the last like four or five years, you know, it was really kind of her um, help, medical help, uh, house help, you know, heart health, you know, because I had a really strong relationship with her. Um, she didn't have anything lovely in her entire world. You know, there were no lacy panties, no uh, romantic novels. Um, she was very alone and not really feminine. Um, in the way that, you know, it just surprised me going through her home and like really getting to see all of her stuff and how little things there were that were lacy and delicate. And then I noticed this lingerie bag um, that probably was never used, but she thought that she needed it for her laundry. Um, so I marbled it and I marbled some of her other things that were family heirloom handkerchiefs that didn't survive the marbling process some of them and they kind of shredded and it occurred to me that i could marble the bag and put a book in there that was about these shredded items that really basically were delicate um but n fell apart anyway despite the bag i don't know i don't know what this piece means 100 percent, but um it's been fun um the shreds of these marbled handkerchiefs got sewn in and stitched down and played with a little bit in addition to um, references to seashells. She loves seashells. So there's uh, were a lot of patternation of scallops, edges, and seashells of things. Um, paper that I wrap presents in and hand marble paper, she kept the paper. So I found a lot of marble paper in her house of mine from the last 20 years, which was kind of interesting to find. So some of that got woven in. So it's a, it's, it's a conceptual jump again, but it's still part of me like reconciling the loss of these people and what they, they meant to me and how they fit in my world now. I'm not really sure yet because it's uh, how do you grieve nine people over that time period? Yeah. That, that's my story. Thank you. They're so beautiful. Um, we had one question in the comments about what kind of thread you used and if it's hand stitched or mis machine stitched. It, everything I do is hand stitched on these and they're I, I stay within the book domain. So they're book binding linen, uh, linen thread. It's thick and kind of chunky. I don't use wax thread in these um, so that they stay a little less smooth. I like it kind of rough and chunky. Yeah. Um, for me, I was just wondering, do you poke them? First with the awl or do you just sew through with the needle? 
You okay. kind of, if you've got, if you're going through paper two, you're going to need to to probably give it some all. I use a Japanese screw punch um, because I want to remove content instead of just having that burr come out the other side and be kind of thick and sticking up. So there, I use a screw punch. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Really beautiful and really beautiful in person. The it looks like, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. It looks like your, your method of marbling is kind of a drawing or painting approach of do you start with a preconceived idea direction you're going to go or well i marble, I marble a whole lot and i marble for a lot of different reasons i started as a wedding photographer and bar mitzvah and baby portraits and that's how i became a bookminder is making products for 25 years i was selling books and when I'm approaching a client, um, I'm showing them a portfolio of traditional designs as well as experimental stuff. And so it really depends on the client. I mean, I have people who want non pareil specifically. You know, they're saying, like, I, this is what I want. Here are the colors. Um, you know, so they're not giving me necessarily playroom. But um, I tell you who's the more interesting client is a bar mitzvah boy, a 13 year old that you show ideas to and start talking about conceptual possibilities with the, the directions they choose um, are very different than their parents. Um, and it can be a struggle at a meeting um, over that book. But um, the kid usually wins because it is his book. Um, <laughs> Well, but yeah, so I mean, man. I marble for different motivations. Um, yeah, yeah. Any anybody else? Thank you. Oh. I, I thought you had another question, but it is not. So, um, if that is good, John, are you ready to go? Yeah. Um, so I have the book here. And some other stuff I'll talk about too. So this is the book. Uh, Mary Elizabeth Nelson kind of pushed me to do a, a, what did she call it? Meanderfold book. So that's what I ended up with. Uh, but she had a belly band on one she sent me. And I was like, well, how am I going to do that? So I made snaps on fabric. Um, <clears throat> and it's a, you know, a nice cottony kind of thing. Uh, my brother sent me a bunch of, uh, he's trying to clear stuff out. Um, after going through our parents' stuff, we're all trying to like reduce a little bit so that people won't have to get a big dumpster when we're gone. Um, but anyhow, he had some old suede. So I was like, okay. So I used the suede to cover the book boards. Um, and then I make my own paper. So this paper is Knopf and uh, old T-shirts, uh, white cotton T-shirts. Uh, Knopf is a plant originally from Africa, but it's huge, long fibers, and it makes superb paper. Uh, you just have to cook it a lot. This was also an experimental book in terms of, I usually do printing for the books. This one, I have a CNC router, and I looked and found somebody had kind of turned their router into a plotter. So basically what I did was got some telescoping brass tube, um, and then of various sizes, you can't really tell, but I had a solder in various sizes getting smaller inside the tube so that it can hold pencil or a pen or something like that. And then this is attached to the router and the router can move and draw like a plotter. Um, pencils and color pencils and pens are not the same diameter and you want very little wiggle room or when you're doing the drawing, it will shift and as it changes direction, it's going to mess up your drawing. So I had to get a bunch of different widths of tubing that telescope inside of each other to be able to get the right diameter. And then you can put little screws and washers on top, depending on how much weight you need for the pencil to actually, or pen to draw into the paper. Then I had, okay, well, now I got to hold the paper on the router. So I had to build a jig that um, can... This comes out, you can put the paper in, depending on how you fold it, and you can make little marks on the underlying paper so you can do alignment if you're doing more than one color kind of thing. And then that just goes on and it clamps down. And this is clamped into the router and then it can draw on it. But that way you can pop the paper out, do a bunch of one, switch colors, and then do your addition, you know, you have your alignment right for the next color. Uh, so it's fun to solve. 
took a while and Joe put up with a lot of me hollering and saying bad words. Um, but yeah, so what happened was I took uh, some John, uh, some Walt Whitman quotes, because uh, I love his, most of his writing. Some of it's problematic, but most of it's really good. Uh, and then did little drawings on a pen tab for the computer. So you can, like in Illustrator or Inkscape, do drawings. And if you try to have continuous line as much as possible, so that the plotter's not having to go up and down and up and down and up and down, just one smooth line. So a lot of these are kind of contour drawings with perhaps one or two lines. Uh, so the black, it's not really in focus, but the black line on the butterfly, and then there's color. And the color is color pencil. Uh, so it's an addition of 25. And my idea was how can I do my drawings, but in a book, to have an addition so that they're they're all the same, but it's all my drawings. So they're all my drawings in the book. Um with the colored pencil, but done on the pen tab, and then the router reproduces it. You take the the Illustrator file, convert it to an engraving line for the router, so that the computer can redo the drawing. Took, took it to the local arts group, the South Mississippi Arts Association, to kind of talk to people. It's like, what would you call this? It's like, I think it's kind of like printmaking, but it is drawing too, because the the line is drawn line. Even the color pencil lines are drawn line. There's no pressure difference um, because I'm not good enough to program that. But the lines are my lines. It's just being reproduced multiple times. I call it printmaking. One of the ladies who actually was willing to con commit at the meeting said she thought it was printmaking too. Uh, this is another book similar as like, if you're going to do one book drawn on the CNC router, why not to do two different ones? So this is a, you talk about um, memory books or grief books. This isn't really a grief book, but uh, an uncle, uh, Joe's uncle, uh, we went to his burial at Arlington Cemetery and I wanted to do something special for his wife and his daughter. So I had them send me some of his old clothes and I made paper out of his old clothes and then made a book with That's that. Wonderful. So he was Navy, retired Navy. Uh, so it was kind of like I wanted a naval theme for the book with kind of a military sense. But I also wanted to have the sense of the family waiting for the sailor to return. Um, a lot of a lot of possibilities with that, but at any rate. So what I ended up with was I ripped off um, some ideas from Minoan and Mycenaean art and did the drawings. So these are all drawings done by the router that I had done that I ripped off from Mycenaean art. Um, and Casey Avery uh, is who the, the gentleman was that this is all his clothing. Um, they insisted that I do the JFK quote that any Navy person on the planet, at least a U.S. Navy person, knows the quote. Um, and then one of the there's a psalm that I particularly like that has to do with being on the depths of the ocean and kind of the indifference of nature. Um, so I, that's what I used for the rest of the book was that psalm. Uh, so that's all letter pressed in, and then there's more drawings at the end and there's the the wife with the child standing on the shore waiting for him to come home it's kind of a moving thing for me to remember him and uh making the book so i will sorry i'm tearing up uh but that happens um people were also talking about paper making and i love paper making obviously um the book boards were covered with the paper made from his clothes as well so the only part of this that isn't his clothing is the book board and the the belly bag um, and, you know, you give this out, I made 60 of them, I think, and so people could take one, but people that see the belly band in terror, it's like, no, that's part of the thing to help hold it closed. But talking about paper making, I've been experimenting also with, um, do people talk about Fabriano? Uh, but anyway, watermarks, and I don't know if I can make this show, so it's pretty subtle. Going through yeah, there. Oh, oh, yeah, you can see through that. Oh, yeah, now yeah. you can see it. Yeah, yeah, the dancing child. Um, yeah. this is backwards for me. I don't know if it's backwards for y'all too, but it, there's a quote from uh, one of the Shaker elder 
lady uh, who is something that I, I very much approach in my studio work. I'm just going to read it to you because I love it. Do all your work as though you had a thousand years to live and as you would do it if you must die tomorrow. Um, and it's uh, Mother Anne Lee is who, who that's a quote of it. Uh, one other thing, one last thing, also uh, Moorish pattern. Um, my background is part Portuguese, and so Moorish pattern and pattern is very powerfully part of Portugal. Um, but anyway, so this is another watermark paper that I worked on. So it's kind of a complicated watermark. So the screen is uh, the mold is brass screen, brass mesh that I cut on the CNC router, the pattern, and then positive and negative squish it. Doesn't quite work, so I have to go back in with an agate and push the brass screen to tighten up the, the design so that when you pull it, the paper is thicker in the deeper parts, thinner in the other. So the light, um, uh, the light is thinner and the dark is thicker. Um, and then when you just look at the paper on its own, it's astounding. I did this for my printing group, made 240 of them. Um, Send it off. And the number of people who are like, love the paper, and they're like, we're surprised. And I put on the back of it said, fancy watermarked paper. And people are, no one holds it up to light. And it's, people are like, oh, I accidentally held it up. It's like, oh, my goodness, there's something there. It's just a crack up to me that people don't figure it out. But yeah, that's it. Any questions? You have several in the, let's see. The first one is, do you sell your paper? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. Well, that answers. I'm kind of, <laughs> I, I have sold a couple of the books, uh, but I generally, the paper I make, I make for myself just because it's, I use it. Um, I also, how do you, how do you sleep at night with all these ideas going through your head? I was um, thinking that too. <laughs> and the pro all the problem solving and stuff, that's quite the tale. Well, it's that's part of the fun. I mean, painting, which is what I do mainly, is painting um, and drawing. It's, it is problem solving. And that's part of the joy is you start. And at some point, one of the best lessons I got from an instructor was at some point, you stop painting the picture and you start painting the painting. So... It's about problem solving. It's how do I make this the best it can be? It's fun. And frustrating sometimes. It's always fun hearing you talk about it. You know, it's I'm always excited to hear what you have to say. And um, I have more questions I need to read. But when I got the book and I saw what your tag information said about the CNC, I was like, hmm, I wonder what that means. And then I was like, you know, kind of figured out what you said. But, you know, it's... It's fun to get your books and see how you made them. Was it clear enough what I talked about how I did it? Yeah, I think today or yes, today. Yes. Oh, definitely. It, to it me, makes it makes okay. perfect sense. Yeah, I I figured there must be something like that from your description on the tag, but it's very helpful to hear you say it. Um, someone asked if you use a Hollander beater for your yes. paper. Uh, it's actually a Mark Lander critter. Uh, it is a Hollander, but not white because his design is a little bit differently but it works functions the same way he's a new zealand guy who came up with a design and it's cheaper than buying the um it was a fifteen hundred dollar beater versus a five thousand dollar beater so <laughs> that's a big difference yeah is mark lander uh, still is he still doing that making the yes he is them? Yeah. yes he is I wanted to say thank you for getting the Klimt. Um, you know, getting a little emotional there. Oh, sorry. Um, oh, yeah, I like that. that. <laughs> um, and I think it's important um, given the work. Um, we have, I'm in the New England Book Artist Group, and we have one member who has made paper from a deceased husband's um, clothing. And um, I was impressed with the idea of that. It, it is emotional to think about that idea. Yeah, well, I did it's one. special. I did, I'm going to kind of stop doing it. Uh, this, because, it, you know, you're trying to work with other people's grief. And so that it can't be about yours. It's got to be about theirs. I had a friend from high school and it's probably one of the best things I've ever done. His wife died of pancreatic cancer and I got some, some of her clothes and 
did it and uh the book came out so superb but it took five years <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> that's dedication 50, yeah. 52 block prints of black white on tone paper made from her clothes really? plus getting him to write stuff for it, it came out beautiful but wow it was a lot of work uh, yeah. i'm gonna yeah. do one for my brother who just passed away um but i gotta finish writing the stories for it so one of the stories is you're you talking about the grief books i wrote a story about the time my brothers had me roadkill that's one of the stories mm -hmm. and it's about how your brothers make you feel special <laughs> believe it or not that's the story you know, on, on, a, on a, an upbeat note I, i've used paper from people's tea tea uh, tea, tea, um, tea towels to make mm -hmm. paper to do pictures you know i, I do sometimes i make uh, jewish uh, wedding contracts kid to vote um for wedding contracts out of out of the linen from the people's uh tea, tea, tea towel so that there's a very upbeat way of using paper oh absolutely make a paper out of something that's meaningful to the people and, I, and to start something to make the print in have integrity from the interior really has okay. i think some some value and these books of they're not really grief books grief doesn't necessarily mean sad because mm -hmm. actually there can be a lot of joy memory so memory the books. ones that i do are try to be about joy so mm -hmm. the one i did with my friend aldo that was about struggle but also about joy too um and the one i'm going to do about my brother i'm going after the humorous stuff of having a brother or three brothers that are all older than you that pick on you but anyway so yeah, it's not not sad. It's grief is multiple multiple facets. I, I think that's what I was trying. The idea of the multiple facets is really what I'm trying to do. Um, most of my stuff has a darker side sometimes um, of the other stuff, and so lately I've been trying to go lighter and not necessarily. I mean, there's a lot to choose in a memory of a person that you've lost. Um, dwelling on the bad things maybe um you know for me it can't it's probably not going to ever be this beautiful like loving kind of approach to some of these people but it will be mitigated now more with the beauty of of uh, the contents of the book i think so we're somehow transforming it hopefully and i like the all the facets kind of notion and i think an artist book is a uniquely uh tuned for that kind of an approach i think um, to cover a lot of different, you know, media, a yeah. lot of different ideas well, in one small space. It really works well. Love your work. Thank you. Thank um, you. Yeah. With yours, obviously, you follow where it goes and it comes out beautifully. Yeah, so just well, follow where it goes. It's never going to go wrong. <laughs> on you. All right. Anything else? Okay. I have um, Gal Smuda next. Are you, Hi. <laughs> are you ready? Yes. Um, unlike everyone else who is talking about the books that they that are in the exhibition, I'm talking about a new book. Um, I just finished it, and it is a. Um, it is also a accordion book, but it's a little different. It's called Caretaker's Lament. Um, I'm caretaker for my husband, and the pages of this book go off in all sorts of directions, just like our lives at this point. Um, but it's based on a song, Night and Day. So if you think of the words, Night and Day, you are the one, um, under the moon and under the sun, um, it, it is a 24-hour job. <laughs> and so um, you have all of these uh, connections and it's I like the idea of books that can be set up in a variety of ways so many of the pieces I've made uh, when they get into exhibitions um, I might give a, a photograph of the of the work installed somewhere but I might not I might just say do as you wish um, because I've seen some of the most interesting installations of the work has been somebody else's idea uh, one of my favorite uh, pieces that I did uh, tags from a um, a mill, and it was a thousand people worked in that room in that mill, and I did the a, a tag 
for everyone's name and the money they had made and the hours they had worked, et cetera. So I had a thousand tags and they, it was installed. Every time it was installed, it was in a different way. Um, my favorite was somebody installed it in rows across a window so that the light filtered through the tags. Um, so I like to be surprised with the result too. Any questions? I love the color a little bit. <laughs> That's a cool I'm one. sorry. Can you open it up a little bit, show some of the pages as they go? I love Thank that you. color palette. That's beautiful. I started life as a painter, so <laughs> every once in a while it comes in handy. <laughs> so again, um, most of the writing is verses from, from the song, Night and Day. And the, that's white gel pen? Yeah. Yeah. It's a wonderful song. I think it's Cole Porter. Yeah. Yeah. I love seeing your craziness behind you, too. Oh, <laughs> can you tell that's my studio? <laughs> yeah, it's like my space. Yeah. Right. We're kindred spirits, honey. <laughs> How well I know. <laughs> Thank you. I noticed the 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 house structure on the front cover too, which I think mm -hmm. is, is it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and on the back. Oh, excellent. Yeah. 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 We only be considering are you considering this for the building book uh two submission? No, actually, for the day, night, and uh, what is it? Morning, night, noon exhibition. Oh, okay. Yeah, at Attleboro. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. I love it. Thank you. Yeah, I love it, too. I also love seeing both of you guys as everyone's backgrounds. It's, it is fun. <laughs> it's fun to see that people have as much paper as I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, any more questions? Uh, Monica, you're up next, if you're here still. I am. Okay. Thank you, Katie. Hello, everyone. I'm so excited. To, I'm sorry I was a little late. I had an appointment I couldn't really change, so. <laughs> um, uh, I have a few pictures of my book, if you'd like me to screen share that, unless you have it and you want to play with it. Screen share, that's probably easiest. Okay, let me see. Let me do a few things. First, hopefully this works. It's been a while since I've done a screen share. Okay, let's see if this works. I don't know if this is going to be big enough. Or oh, okay. Can you see that? We can see it, but you should open it up. Right now, we're seeing all your files, also. Okay, so then let me stop the share and go differently. Let me see. Oh, okay. Here's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. Okay. And then I'm going to open up something else. Let's see if I can, oops. See if I can get to that one later. Um, so I'm so excited. I was able to finally submit a book for this accordion exhibit. I had planned to do it last year, but there were some life issues that got in the way. Um, and I asked Katie uh, what, like, how old a book could be because I have been wanting to submit a toroidal since last year after I learned this structure from Stephanie Wolf. Um, and I don't remember if she taught it for Kalamazoo or if I took it she online. She did, but I'm not sure if you were in the class or if you took it somewhere else yeah. either. So. I, I might've taken it through you guys. Um, yeah. and, and it's so interesting how Stephanie Wolf tends to work with circular shapes I've noticed. <laughs> So as I made this book last year, I participate in a monthly online challenge on Instagram. It's called Are You Book Enough? There's a theme every month. Uh, the woman who started it, Sarah Maker, is based in Seattle, and she has a print studio called Editions Studio. She started this uh, challenge back in 2017, and it started hitting my radar somewhere around April. And I would see people I was following talking about Are You Book Enough? And I'm just wondering, what is this Are You Book Enough? Um, and I found out more and submitted my first book in November, 2017. And I've made a book almost every month since then. So I have over 60 artist books from this challenge. Um, and I've been learning all kinds of different structures, which has been really wonderful. And I do a lot of creative things, but 
Um, I can see that I have definitely landed on the thing I really love most because I love books. I love reading. I love binding. I love making artist books because I've done collage and mixed media. I've been a seamstress in my life. And book arts are so open to materials and concepts that this this is the thing I, I can see. I will never be bored. <laughs> So back last year in February, the theme was constellation. And I thought, oh, the toroid would be perfect for that. Because when I think of old cartography maps, they would usually have the circle to be the globe. And sometimes when they're doing astrology, old mapping of the stars, it was often in a circle. And at some point that month, I heard about a song used by the Underground Railroad called Follow the Drinking Gourd which is about the Big Dipper and the North Star and how they are connected. And both are, you know, constellations that are used in navigation, used in navigation for the Underground Railroad and used in navigation for the Navy and other things as well. And I thought, oh, this is gonna be a great constellation and I can write some of the lyrics on, on the edge. And oh my God, what luck. It happened to be February, which is African-American History Month. So I was really thrilled. Um, I actually got two different paper colors. I have the black and I also used dark blue. Um, I'll see if, I'm gonna stop this real quick and see if I can get to the dark blue one. Well, okay, what I'll do is, shoot, that didn't work. <laughs> well we saw a blue uh, we saw a, a, yeah we saw that okay oh was it was it big enough yeah it was fine okay all right okay because oh i see what's happening um so when i was making i made prototypes so i was working with a dark blue and i was also working with a black and i really liked the black i have sold the blue one um and the paint I used was actually a handmade paint when I was working at an art supply store for a little while. A fellow co-worker was playing with making watercolors, the shimmery kind. So she she had made a batch and then I asked for a bigger batch because I knew I'd probably be using it for a lot because I used some of it for a different artist book early on in my Are You Book Enough career. Um, so there's the black and the blue. There's the shimmer paint. And then I used also some glitter gel pens for writing the lyrics and making the Big Dipper and aligning it to Polaris. I, it's not always easy even for me to see it sometimes <laughs> because there's so many stars that are splattered. And all I focused on was Polaris and the Big Dipper. And um, I didn't really think about other constellations that are around those particular, those, those two in particular, but um, it's so, so then when I made the belly band, I also used some of the, the, the splattered paper for that. So it all goes together nicely. And I don't think I have a picture of it here, but what I also did was I write on the spine of the belly band or no, I wrote on the spine of the book, the constellation 2022, February 23, sorry. So yeah, stop this one. And you can go back to the other big one. Yay. So that's, that's, I have some of the lyrics on the outer edge. I hand lettered. I do a lot of hand lettering and a little calligraphy. So, yeah. That's my book. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. It's so beautiful. I like, um, the black by itself the most but seeing the blue next to the black looks so pretty too it's it was hard to decide but when you really are out in outer space it's 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 essentially like no light so i went with the one that's the most accurate the blue is pretty i i admit yeah. it looks very yeah it's really nice. i like the the hole in the middle kind of align it and where am i going well you know that's the thing about the toroidal because it is a geometric toroid, which means donut. And when you make the book, which I like to call an accordion in the round, because it's all one piece and it's not glued together to make that shape, you'd need to have some little circle in the center because when you have all those folds, you need to release some of the, 
the uh, the thickness because when you have it at, at the actual center, it, it gets too thick. And what starts to happen is the paper starts to get weird and it starts to twist a little bit. So it gets really unhappy. So the circle in the middle helps to relieve that. So it folds up nicely and evenly and cleanly. Yeah. Any more questions? Okay. So Ramsey, you are next, but before we go on, um, if you haven't shared yet and I missed you and you had emailed me that you want to share, go ahead and let me know. Um, or if you just were on the fence about it, you can let me know. But um, Ramsey, if you're ready, do you need me to get your book? Um, no, actually, um, perfect. I, I really enjoyed everybody showing their work. It's really inspiring. I really, really enjoy it. Um, I'm on the other end of the spectrum of making accordion books of just starting. Um, mine is in the gallery, and it's a Sienna type, and it's called James River. Um, and you can, it's pretty self-explanatory, so you can just find it in the gallery. But what I wanted to sh share was actually a, a exercise, an exercise we did for a class I'm in, and it's a strip book. And um, I cut this shape out using a laser cutter at the library which uh, is a really nice tool to learn how to use. And if I, if I can just share my screen, I'll show you it um, expanded. And what's interesting about this book is that, um, this is the part I always fall apart on. Um, it's the play value is really, can you see that picture now? Yes, we can, yeah. Okay, the play value is really fun. Everybody I've handed this to has twisted it around in uh, their own way, um, but I thought it was really successful. So it's just uh, multiple images with a pivot point and um, a tiny little screw in the middle. And I really had fun making this and I thought it was really uh, successful. So I wanted to, I wanted to share that. It is so cool. Um, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Did you That's know it. it. It's pretty fun. It's fun. You all are talking about grief and everything. And I, I made a toy. <laughs> Whoops. That's not for y'all. That's some cyanotypes from a show at AU. Did they cut it all at once? Did, did they cut it on a... No, you oh, can't okay. actually... Because the way the way that a laser does burn the paper... Oh, yeah. And what happens is... Um, if you have a stack of paper, it um, ignites because of the oxygen. Um, people have, technically you're only supposed to do one sheet at a time. Um, the different artists who have their own machines try different uh, stacks of paper, but it, it might ignite. Yeah, it, it looks so perfect. That's why I was wondering, you know, like just like a little block of perfectly well, aligned, but yeah. It's an SVG file, so when you so you do it on the computer, so the image is just going to come out the same every time. Cool. So I encourage you all. I, I mean, you all are beautiful craftsmen, but if you're interested in laser cutting, your uh, local library might have a machine you can learn on. And I did want to mention uh, one other thing, which is that if any of you watch Craft in America which is a series that's on PBS and there are old ones and new ones. And sometimes you can find them on YouTube. There is one about a woman uh, who makes paper out of um, veterans old uniforms. Oh. And it's part of their therapy as they're trying to get back, get back into the world. They do this workshop where they turn their old retired uniform into paper. And the stuff is pretty amazing. And I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of the author, I mean, the uh, artist, and I can't remember the episode. But you will talk about Verklempt. Uh, it's a really great uh, uh, episode, which is about the military and recovering or, and vet, returning vets, and then these old uniforms. That's combat paper. Ah. Combat paper, fantastic. Yeah. Have you so yeah, have they, you seen they that? do workshops various places around the country? 
it's 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 really inspiring. I yeah, we think. had them here once too. It was really it was oh. a long time ago though. Very long time ago. Oh, okay. Well, I'm completely ignorant. I'm coming in here late to the party. <laughs> um, you do have a question about do you prefer laser cut over die cut like um a, like a die cut machine like a circuit cutter or a cricket, cricket cutter? Cricket. Yeah. I don't know how to use the crickets. And I like um the when I use the laser cutter, I don't have to buy any proprietary sticky materials or vinyl or paper or blades or anything. I just found for some reason it just irritates me that that die cut stuff is such a racket. So I just I do get char on the back side with the laser, which you wouldn't get with the cricket. I don't know if you can see the char, some of the char. Oh, that's yeah. Gone. yeah, but that yeah. is part of the charm. <laughs> you could use that somehow yeah i was yeah. just thinking that there there must be you know who knows there's potential there yeah absolutely um but also if you get good enough which i'm still learning you can eliminate the char um as you learn more about the materials you can go low key on a cricket you don't have to buy and it and i don't i wouldn't be buying vinyl <laughs> necessarily anyway but um you can just feed like normal cardstock into it and it doesn't uh -huh. have to, it doesn't have to have all the weird stuff yeah you okay can, i guess i got just so totally militant about cricket blades cricket stick pads cricket yeah they have a lot of accoutrement that they're trying to suck you into buying but you don't have mm -hmm. to Okay, well, that is very good to know. <laughs> but I have fallen in love with the Glowforge now. <laughs> there are more and more of these maker spaces associated with public libraries throughout the United States. They mm -hmm. have an incredible amount of resources that you can use for free, and they usually train you on it for free, too, before they let you use it. Um, yeah. So it, it's a great resource. So check out your local areas. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Katie. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having this, this meeting, too. I, I really enjoy seeing everybody's work. Yeah, I'm so glad you could come. We have one more person that would like to share. And Laurie, do you want me to grab your book? Or are you? Um, oops, you're muted. I'll ask you to unmute. I think I can do it. Okay, perfect. Thank you. If not, then I guess grab it. But um, so my accordion book is seven inches tall by 11 feet long. Um, but because of the accordion, of course, it doesn't, uh, really seem like it's 11 feet long, but it, it began, um, through a series of work that I was involved with last year here in West Michigan, um, about the same time I retired from the Kalamazoo Book Art Center and, um, it's called photosynthesis. And I was using monoprints to, uh, make pieces there's about 25 pieces that were done on a jelly plate actually using acry acrylic uh, golden open paint which has a longer dry time but I really like the detail that I was able to get with some of the st handmade stencils I was making um, and these the two that I'm showing you are eight by eight um, I did one that was 12 by 36 a bunch that were eight by eight and then I don't know eight or so that were 10 by 10 so my plate was 12 by 14. So given the sizes that I just read off to you, you can imagine I had quite a bit of scrap cut away, some of which was, you know, fairly useless. And some of it was just as pretty, in my opinion, as what I was mounting. So um, I'll try this screen share now, which I should know how to do, but I don't. Did you open them already, Larry? Yeah. Okay. It's uh, saying open system preferences. Just click there. Oh, I just show your book. Uh, do I just grab it? Please. Yeah, please. Okay. Yeah. If if you haven't already allowed Zoom to share your screen, you have to actually leave the Zoom meeting and open preferences yeah, that's... and allow it and then come back in. So I'm not going to bother with that. That's what it looks like. It was going to be complicated. So Katie's got, what do you, oh, you got the book there. Yeah, so the it's so huge though, Laurie. I didn't think about that. So I'm going to hold it up. Just 
<laughs> it's a lot, it's only 11 feet long. <laughs> um, so it's collaged um, pieces of the of the prints on a black paper, and then a lot of uh, machine stitching. And the machine stitching was uh, at first an aesthetic that I really liked because I just liked the stitching. But the the series is called Hidden Connections on photosynthesis. The idea that the cells of our you know natural world are all working together or trying to work together and that this was a composite of what your garden or your yard or whatever might look like with all these different plants and the threads being um, kind of another thing that holds them together. But if you notice on kind of under Katie's arm there, there's a bunch of threads hanging off so that when the, um, when the book is on the display, um, which is kind of coiled around a rather large pedestal at the Book Art Center, as opposed to being displayed linearly, those threads hang off as if they're roots. So um, I was, yeah, pretty happy with the way that I um, was able to use the original artwork, which was the purpose of what I was doing in a way that I actually excites me as much, if not as, you know, a little bit more than what I was putting on the wall. So yeah and it reminds me a little bit I, I think she's left the meeting but the woman who started off her demonstration I, I, I'm not doing cut paper here but um, similar concept and similar similar vibe I guess I'd call it and just using different techniques so thanks Katie now you got to put it all back down <laughs> that's okay I have a couple to put away yeah. I'm glad I can hold it up I love the way that the paper looks on the back too, the the black paper that has been sewn through. I was trying to, I don't think you can see it on the screen very easily, but it looks really pretty on the back too. Well, I was debating at first about, it, you know, like, okay, I've got a, obviously a clear front and back side to this book. Um, and was that bothersome to me? And I decided it wasn't. Um, but I also technique wise, I thought, well, I don't know if I'll be able to stitch through all of that, you know, because it was getting pretty bulky and then it would start to crack on the folds. And that's the other thing. The folds are uneven. It's not like every fold is on the four inch line or, you know, whatever. It's very, um, you know, one fold might be four inches and the next fold might be um, six inches. The next fold might be 11 inches. I, I did it very randomly. There was no planning involved with this with the folds at all. And I, you know, that was kind of a design choice as well. It doesn't fold down nicely where I could put it, you know, a belly band around it and tuck it away. Um, it does kind of e explode, but um, that was kind of a nod to the chaos of the natural world because, you know, there's nothing that is going to be um, so, so perfectly perfect out there in your um, backyard every time. So that's why it was a decision to make those folds very uneven. They're all vertical, they're just different widths. And then the back of it, like I said, I, I decided that I wasn't going to let that annoy me with the black on the back. And because there's got stitching in it, it's not just black, it does have some texture, which I think is what you were talking about, Katie. Yeah, I like the texture a lot. And I think it makes perfect sense to have black on the back, especially when it's like displayed in a circle like that. If it had color on both sides, I think that it would be distracting. So I like yeah. that. Just... acts as like a background a backboard kind of thing yeah yeah so next time i'll prepare my screen share ahead of time so i don't have to do that no, no problem but i'm glad it was right here so i could grab it for you <laughs> <laughs> except for then i was like oh it's so big <laughs> yeah <laughs> the scale of that piece is amazing and with all those colors and talking about the way things are related to each other this the scale is just such a beautiful part of it well, thank you. Yeah. And then, well, to finish it too, I don't know if this is of interest to anyone, but because I was using acrylic paint instead of inks, um, I needed to worry about when it folded down, especially if it was going to be in storage for any time, um, that the acrylic inks, or sorry, the acrylic paint wasn't sticking together. So there's something called Dorland's Wax, which you may know about, um, I didn't want to use that because I wanted the sheen of what I had going on the paper to remain, whereas the Dorlin wax kind of knocks it, knocks it back and actually looks waxy. So here's my educational trip, tip for the day. It's something called Renaissance wax. 
And I got that tip from Golden uh, directly. And apparently, like, you know, the Tate Museum in London and, you know, the Met and all those, you know, the museums use it to polish up their their uh, chain mail on the old knight, you know, armored knight things. And uh, so it's archival, obviously. And what I found over the Dorland's wax is that it didn't cut the shine back any more than... Um, I want it. It remained as it is, as opposed to making it look waxy. This, so that's this, good. I think the Dorlands will buff a little bit, but the Renaissance probably buffs better. I don't know. Because you can buff it to a little bit of a sheen. Like with a real soft cloth. Yeah. Just buffing it. Do you find, do, do the you Renaissance feel, wax might work way better. Do you it's feel good like for paste paper, too. It, it goes on nicely as a finish on a paste paper. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, do you find that the Dorland's wax, do you use them equally, the Renaissance? I don't, and well, I don't, I've never used the Renaissance and I haven't used Dorland's in a million years, oh. but I do remember that it, it would buff a little bit um, yeah. to bring less matte, but but the if the museums are using the Renaissance stuff, use it because it'll probably buff better. That uh, They know what they're doing. Well, the that, reason I started that's with That's got it, a beautiful you can, shame. You can see the shine on these um, and that's that's really what I did not want to lose because on the uh, art, the 2D stuff, I wanted the microscopic slide look to remain and the Dorland's wax completely obliterated that shine. So that's why I went to the, the Renaissance wax and it just made sense to continue using it the same on the, the book. Um, you're right, it, it looks great on paste paper too. It, it does give it a nice, nice finish, so. Thank you. It was really fun to listen to everyone. Yeah, thank you, everybody. If you want to stick around and, and ask questions or chat for a bit, we can.